43 tolls for 43 people every March 22nd for the last 10 years. I literally remember every single little thing about that first 24 hours. Six of those tolls are for Jessica Pizanka. She lost six members of her family. I lost my sister, Katie, um, her husband, Shane, my two nephews, Hunter and Wyatt, and then Shane's parents, Lou and Judy. It was a normal Saturday morning for her. She was doing some work around the house when she got a text alerting her to a landslide in the area. I texted my sister, tried calling her, didn't hear anything, you know, went to Facebook Messenger because sometimes service wasn't great out there. When she couldn't reach her family, she called a friend who was a firefighter. And I remember like yesterday, he said, it's gone. Like steelhead drive is gone. Like there is nothing left. And that like, ugh to this day is like, like that conversation happened yesterday. They lived on Steelhead Drive, the subdivision that was wiped out, but still the family held out hope their loved ones would be found alive. Like they're gonna find them, like I know they will. That's until they heard the words that would forever change their lives. He just told my dad, I'm sorry. Like it's, it's gone, they're gone. Like it's, yeah. So it was, it was a rough, rough day. Katie and her husband, Shane, owned a glass business together. Shane's parents, Lou and Judy, had just moved to the area from Spokane. Lou served in the Marines. Judy operated a bar for years. And two of the youngest victims, six-year-old Hunter and four-year-old Wyatt. All six of them had been swept up in the landslide, three generations of one family, gone within minutes. They were your typical all-American family. And they came out here, Shane loved the outdoors, and their house was like our little slice of heaven. In the years since, Jessica has turned her pain into action. She made a promise to her sister that there would be a permanent place where victims' families could go to grieve. I think that the families deserved more than just some trees on the side of a freeway. The second part of that for me, and it's almost right up there as, as important as the family, is these guys. The first responders, Darrington Fire, Arlington Fire, Oso, all of these men and women stuck it out there and saw some of the most terrible, awful, terrible things you could possibly see and feel in life to bring my family back to me. But now that her promise to her sister is fulfilled, after 10 years, the pain is still so bad that they can't bear to live here any longer. We're leaving it in good hands with the community. And, you know, the, the triggers around here for my parents, it, it's hard. It's hard to go to the high school where Hunter would be playing football. It's hard to not know that we're not gonna take you know, see pictures of him going to the dances and all those things that we're missing out, that we're living through with my nieces, we don't get to see with the boys, and it's not fair. After the opening of the permanent memorial, she and her family plan to move out of state. The triggers of the area are never gonna go away for us, and especially for my parents, and I want the later part of my parents' life to be a little happier. There's a huge hole in our family. And there will always be a huge hole. And, that, and that's one thing, you know, I've sat down with both my parents um, when we started talking about this moving out of state and all that. Like, that hole will still be there. And we're not trying to kind of fill that hole, but we're trying to kind of help with the daily triggers of that hole. But there will always be a hole in our family. As with many people who experience a tragedy like this, she too had a crisis of faith. What kind of God would take babies and little kids and you know, all these men and women that were in the military that served our country and all these things. It's like, it's very hard to fathom that. But she'll leave Oso knowing that she left behind a piece of herself and a permanent place where people can think of their loved ones. I find zero peace going to, to the cemetery where they're called Mary Miss. I don't feel them there. I don't, it's just so final and so, I just, I, I can't bring myself to do it. When I go up there, I could feel my sister. I could feel the family. I could hear their voices. I could, you know, all the things. Um, I get up there and I get sort of like a peace when you're up there.